and rising very early in the morning, while it was still dark, he departed and went out to a desolate place, and there he prayed. And Simon and those who were with him searched for him, and they found him and said to him, Everyone is looking for you. And he said to them, Let us go on to the next towns, that I may preach there also, for that is what I came for. And he went throughout all Galilee, preaching in their synagogues and casting out demons. And a leper came to him, imploring him, and kneeling, said to him, If you will, you can make me clean. Moved with pity, he stretched out his hand and touched him, and said to him, I will be clean. And immediately the leprosy left him, and he was made clean. And Jesus sternly charged him, and sent him away at once, and said to him, See that you say nothing to anyone, but go, show yourself to the priest, and offer for your cleansing what Moses commanded, for a proof to them. But he went out and began to talk freely about it, and to spread the news, so that Jesus could no longer openly enter a town, but was out in desolate places, and people were coming to him from every quarter. Heavenly Father, as we come to hear your word today, may you speak into our hearts and into our lives that which you want us to hear. Amen. So as we reach the end of the first chapter of the Gospel of Mark, we hear and read that Jesus is causing quite a stir uh, in Galilee as he's continuing his ministry. He's going out preaching uh, the Gospel, the Gospel of repentance and believing. He's healing people, he's casting out demons. And, and Mark tells us right at the beginning of this part that Jesus wakes up in the middle of the night. It, it's dark. He goes out to a desolate place to pray to his Father. Jesus needs to stay in, in his ministry. He wants to spend time with his Father. Remember the Jesus, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, the Trinity, so close pouring out relationship and love. Uh, and now Jesus is here on earth as a man and he wants to spend time with his father and in the craziness of his ministry with all these people around it must be so difficult and this is a, a good practice that he shows us that he goes out to a place where no one can disturb him but as we will hear they do uh, uh, to pray to spend time with the father to be sustained uh, to seek his face it, it's such an, uh, an important practice that we must continue to do ourselves on a on a uh, if not a daily basis, definitely a weekly basis. So Jesus is going out to pray to the Father. Uh, and we see the stir that he's creating because um, the disciples have woke up. Jesus isn't there. Uh, they must have had some anxiety. Has he left? Where has he gone? But he hasn't gone. He hasn't left them. Uh, but we see that and we see it happen with the people as well because what we're told is the disciples say to Jesus when they found him, look all the people are wondering where you are as well, where, where have you been? You're not, you're not where we expected you to be. What a question uh, they're asking that so many people ask today. But he was out uh, spending time with his father, showing the way. They, you notice that nobody else was out uh, praying to God the Father, just Jesus was out praying to God the Father. So Jesus tells them that uh, his ministry um, must continue and he must go preach uh, other places because that's his main thing he's come to preach uh, that the kingdom of God is near for people to repent and to believe and he must go to other places there's too many people around now and, and people are coming to him to be healed and for demons to be cast out and as I said in last week's sermon that he did this and he has compassion on people but they're not repenting and believing and Jesus come to give that message so he's moving on around Galilee to bring that good news to people so Jesus and his disciples move on his time there is done and he, and and this is the other thing he knows when his time has been uh, done in that place and when it is to move on so he moves on and we we see this ex an, another extraordinary part uh, that Mark tells us out uh, of all the many extraordinary things that Jesus does uh, and there must be so many we probably just get a few but this shows us that Jesus um, 
is, is working within the old uh, rites of the religion of Judaism. Uh, he's come to bring a new way, but not to replace the existing thing that was there. And that, and that was very important. That actually could have destroyed Jesus' ministry. Because um, people would have said, oh, he's come to do uh, uh, this new thing. The old thing is absolutely wrong. We've got it completely wrong. And Jesus is showing them a better way uh, within uh, their, their faith. So a leper comes up to Jesus on his knees, which is, again, is, is extraordinary. So a leper, this is uh, someone, uh, as it's recorded at the time, and the weather wrote, a leper is someone with a skin disease. Now, we just have to understand about what's going on um, in the ceremonial part of, of the, Judea, the faith uh, of the Jews, is that if you, uh, there was clean and unclean, and you were clean until you broke one of the many rules and then you were made unclean and then you had to go to make a sacrifice and, and to be declared clean by the priest uh, so you can carry on your life without being made unclean and there were certain things that you could and couldn't do then when you're unclean. If you had a skin disease like this man did, you were permanently unclean. You were like a, a, a dead body uh, in that sense. If a, a dead body would make people unclean if they touched it. So um, what they're, they're, they're basically like the living dead and they couldn't live amongst normal society and so they would live in their own groups and colonies and um, if anyone would ever come near them they would have to shout unclean unclean to make sure that no one came near them to get uh, uh, whatever they perhaps had um, and to keep others safe and, and like I said not to be made unclean so we see this man who uh, would have heard Jesus's um, reputation and uh, comes out of his colony comes out of his group and goes up to Jesus and, and, and kneels down before him uh, in reverence and says to him if you will you will make me clean you know he's not demanding him to do it he's saying it's your choice and you will make me clean also you know just here he doesn't say uh, you will make me better you will make me well he says, you make me clean, because it's not just about getting better uh, or, or well, it's being, being clean. And so he can resume his life, he can go back to his family and his friends and, and, and to where he used to live. And so he's asking Jesus, you can make me clean. He's recognising, in that sense, who he is. Now Mark tells us uh, that Jesus has pity on him. Um, in some earlier manuscripts, and, and, and as a suggestion that it, the scribes changed this word, it was said Jesus was angry, uh, not not at him. He was angry at the fact that uh, this wasn't the way that things were supposed to be. This was not uh, how God had created us to live and to be. This is the fallen state of the world. And then, and humanity in shunning these people, and, and we see exactly Jesus showing us or, or them as well a better way. And so he had pity, or he was angry, or definitely both, on uh, this man. And so he reached out and touched this man, the the untouchables, the the living dead. Uh, he reached out and showed compassion. Now this man wouldn't have had anyone who had touched him for outside, probably even of those in the colony that they had, that group. Uh, this was the first person would have probably touched him for years and I, I myself could only imagine it's been a long time for him because of the desperation that he goes out to Jesus to uh, ask him to do this. So Jesus reaches down and touches him, uh, which is astonishing and the disciples must have been absolutely shocked. What What is he doing here? This is uh, absolutely wrong. You cannot uh, touch this man at all. He is unclean. And, and you notice that Jesus is then made unclean and, and, and we're not told that he goes to the synagogue because Jesus is God. But he's just shown them the, the better way. This is what you do. This is how you treat your father, brothers and sisters. And immediately this man was made um, clean. He was made clean and he can now resume his life. And so Jesus is um, telling him straight away. And, he and we're told that Mark tells us that he tells him sternly. He tells him sternly, 
you must go um, to the priests and um, make your offering as well so you that Moses has commanded so you can be made clean Jesus has made him clean Jesus has um, healed him but it's also within the Jewish tradition and and the rules that were uh, set out that he must go and, and, and go to the priest and so the priest can declare him clean so that he may enter back into society and live a normal life like I said Jesus didn't come to replace what was there he just came to show them a better way and a more compassionate and loving way and, and, and when we mean sternly we mean sternly uh, but this man uh, who had just been healed he, he didn't listen to that part as, as many uh, as we talked about the last couple of weeks people didn't in that sense because he had just been healed uh, he had just been able to go back into uh, his society and to live his life so he didn't go to the temple um, which wouldn't have Jesus and his ministry because people would then as I said start saying that Jesus is showing them a new way he's going to replace the old way um, he went out instead and started to tell everybody uh, about what Jesus had done uh, and, and praising him and you can understand why he did that but Jesus had told him this is what you must do and he disobeyed Jesus um, and in a sense by doing that he caused Jesus a lot of problems because what happened again is that people came out and they wanted to be healed by Jesus uh, like this man had been healed but this man hadn't also properly entered into society again because he hadn't followed the way that Jesus had told uh, him to do and so we could just see when we're called by God to do something uh, we should go and, and, and do that and yes things can get really exciting and we just want to sing God's praises and it's right but first of all we must accomplish what God has told us to do for him and then we can go and give the testimony about it after not the other way around not the, round, the way around that um, this man did uh, d uh, disobeying uh, what Jesus uh, had told him uh, to go and do and it caused Jesus all sorts of problems because lots of people came uh, then out to him um, and wanted to be healed and it, and it stopped once again his main ministry of going to preach to people coming asking them and telling them uh, of the good news and to repent and to believe and so Jesus then couldn't go into the towns he couldn't go and, and meet people where they were at he had to go out into desolate places and people had to come out to him um, which shows the, the success in a sense of his ministry but it also shows that people uh, where their hearts were that they wanted to be made better but Jesus of course he made them better because he had pity on them because uh, uh, the way uh, they were being treated and the way that um, the world had fallen uh, Jesus loves them so much but he had to change his ministry he had to go out to desolate places but what we see today in, in this passage is uh, just examples of, of Jesus on how he sustained his own ministry by being uh, with God in prayer um, sustained through that separated from God as he was uh, with him permanently before uh, still with him through the Holy Spirit but also showing us the way that we should be praying to God the Father uh, being sustained by him getting to know him but also how we treat others how we treat others who are shunned by society Jesus had both compassion and anger uh, on this on this man's circumstance that he was uh, shunned by society had to shout unclean and showed a better way by touching uh, this man uh, against all the rules uh, and having compassion and healing him and, and it, you know as Christians we really need to uh, to take heed of this that we go 
past what society says should happen uh, uh, to certain people or they've done something wrong and, and have compassion and to show society a better way, a, a way of loving people uh, that they might do the same. But to be honest, it's a challenge to us because people, and for us as well, uh, will can only emulate Jesus if we first know him and we know uh, what he's done and, and why he does it. So this is the importance of Jesus going out to preach the gospel, to change hearts, because he knows people aren't going to go out in those times and touch lepers, because the, the, the law tells them that they can't. But Jesus says, you can, because uh, I've come to show you a better way. Uh, I've come to show uh, compassion uh, and, to, and to bring these people uh, love and uh, to back into society who have been pushed away through the rules of man because remember uh, Jesus was challenging them, challenging them about getting it how they were getting it so so wrong so we could take today about how we seek God's face in prayer going out to quiet places not being distracted but actually then living out our faith going beyond what society says and say and saying this is what it is to live as a Christian and we will challenge those unjust structures of society and we will show you uh, who don't know Jesus a better better way so much so that when that happens we have to go out to desolate places because so many people are coming to us and they might be coming to us for prayer or to heal or to whatever it might be but we must preach the gospel Jesus number one um, mission was to preach the good news to those so they could know that the kingdom of God was near and repent and believe and we say amen to that so let's just pray Heavenly Father we thank you that Jesus shows us a way to pray to you that we go to quiet places so we can really hear your voice and get to know you and also Lord that he showed such compassion and also a righteous anger in that and to help those who are shunned by society but Lord where we learn that as well also help us to listen to your command Lord that we're not distracted by what you're calling us to do but our testimony comes after we've accomplished what you first set out us to do and not before that we do not disobey you and we pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.